are you? Trigger X is back and welcome to another The Elder Scrolls Online video here on my channel guys and today I want to show you finally my new Ice Warden PvP build and this is the build that I used in the last gameplay video and now with the Fire Song DLC this build is even stronger than before but I still have a lot of clips from the last DLC so I also want to upload them so maybe in the next videos in the next gameplay videos there will be a mix with new clips and with old clips and you will definitely see the difference between the old clips and the clips since the Fire Song DLC released because with the new patch we deal for example 12% more damage now with our ice staff equipped they changed this passive and the second passive that is also very powerful now is this one here we deal now some extra proc damage when we apply the chill status effect on an enemy and this is very very powerful we use a lot of ice skills i play a charged ice staff so we proc the chill effect the full time and this is the full time some extra small burst damage with a lot of skills and it works so great and i really enjoy this build and i would say guys now i show you my ice warden build and we start with the stats and here you guys can see now the completely unbuffed stats of this build and now I show you a screen of the fully buffed stats and here you will see we play with a lot of magicka recovery and this is not only needed that we can spam our heal skills, no it's also very needed because we can spam our attacks because with this build we have a lot of pressure damage. With a spin to win one for example we go more for burst damage in the right timing, we charge for example a lot of ultimate points with, and then we burst the enemy with our downbreaker spin to win combo and the other time we play more defensive. Now with this build we can play more offensive wise, we can deal more pressure on enemy, this is especially very helpful if you fight tanky people. We have also a small heal debuff with this build, so the pressure damage is really good and we can spam our attacks with a lot of magicka recovery and this brings a lot of enemies to struggle. We have also a decent amount of spell damage, the penetration is not so good here in the stats, but I'm using a CP passive that works very great with this build and the resistance are normal. I play a lot of light pieces, I play some medium pieces and one heavy and yeah guys these are the stats of this build i'm going here 44 points into magicka 20 points into health i'm an imperial and i'm using the atronach mundo stone now we're going to show you guys the sets that i'm using here in this build and we start on the front bar with the master perfected ice staff with a frost damage enchantment and the charged trade charged is so powerful in this build not only we have because we have the extra proc damage now with the chill effect no we have also tons of other status effects and this works great in this build so charged is definitely a must have here the master perfected ice death gives you 100 extra spell damage when you have it equipped and 600 extra spell damage when we use the destructive touch ability when you don't have the perfected one, the normal one also works and if you don't have the master staff overall then you can use a monster set and play eye staff of the frostbite set here, the second set that we are using here in this build. Frostbite gives you 2 times weapon and spell damage, some extra critical chance and 8% more damage with our frost abilities and 6% more damage when we apply the chill status effect on the enemy because we play eye staff so we also apply the minor brittle debuff. Before I continue with the sets I forgot to show you guys something, these are here now the completely unbuffed stats of this build because I forgot to have um, the buff food active, I'm going here with the clockwork citrus filet buff food, I forgot to show you the food and I don't have it active in this moment, so these are here now the completely unbuffed stats and now I'll show you the set that I'm using on the back bar, the second 5 piece set, it's wretched vitality and I'm going here with 2 swords of wretched vitality, both of them are in infused, one with a poison damage enchantment the other one for disease damage enchantment. Wretch Vitality, I think the most of you guys know this set already, gives us tons of recovery, magicka and stamina recovery and this is very helpful in this build. Why I'm going here with two infused weapons? The reason for this is we can proc our enchantments also on the front bar and on the front bar we are going here with a charged ice staff so we apply also the status effects of poison damage and disease damage on our target with a very high chance and i'll show you now how this works we used the black lock on the back bar and we can fight on the front bar going to the target and you will see on top there we proc both of the status effects as well we proc the heal debuff eight percent heal debuff on our enemy nice to have very helpful and we have also the extra poison dot on the target and you guys can see it it's the full time on the target there's such a high uptime and this works so great. Also we deal some extra proc damage. You guys can see it on the damage numbers. There are more than one damage number because we proc the enchantments. So the plate clock can deal with the both damage enchantments here. Some extra damage and we proc 
the both status effects. This is the reason why I'm going here with two infused weapons. We can proc the enchantment so often and this works great. Instead of the poison damage enchantment here, you can also play for weapon and spell damage enchantment. That also works, then you have some extra damage overall and some extra heal power. With a poison damage enchantment here, you guys saw it, we have the full time a dot on the target and we have also the extra proc when the poison damage procs with the blade cloak. This also works, choose what you personally like more, one of the both enchantments, both of them are good. The next set that I'm using here in this build is one piece of trainee for more maximum health and the mythic that I'm using here is the Sea Serpent's Coil that gives you 430 extra spell damage and the Major Berserk that gives you also extra 10% more damage overall. And every 10 seconds you have 40% damage reduction. And yeah, some people say, yeah, this mythic makes you so tanky. No guys, it's just every 10 seconds the 40% damage reduction. And it also procs with dots, for example, or light attacks. So it's only one hit that is with 40% damage reduction. It's a bit helpful against gankers, but it's not so good for tankiness. Some people think this mythic makes you incredibly tanky. No, <laughs> definitely no. Okay, now I'll show you the full armor again. I'm going in this build with three pieces in medium, three in light, and one in heavy. Five of the pieces are in impen. The heavy chest here is in reinforced, and one is in well, well filtered. I'm going with the full armor with the multi effect enchantment. And I show you guys now from top to bottom the full armor that I'm using. A head of Wretched Vitality here, the trainee chest, shoulders of Wretched Vitality. The Sash of Frostbite, Gloves of Frostbite, The Legs of Fresh Vitality, Shoes of Frostbite, Jewelry, Sea Serpent's Coil in Infused with Spell Damage, and Two Rings of Frostbite, both of them are with Swift and also with Spell Damage. Okay guys, this is the gear that I'm using here in this build, I show you now again from top to bottom the full gear, fast. Yeah, this is the front bar, on the back bar I'm going with Fresh Vitality, this is the armor here now. And guys, I'm going with five pieces in impen, one in well fitted, and one in reinforced. Three medium, three light, and one in heavy. Okay, guys, this is the gear that I'm using in this build, and now I show you the champion points. Let's start this time with the red CPs first because I want to show you something in the blue CPs then. And here we are going with celerity for more movement speed, relentlessness for major protection after we get stunned. Pain's Refuge for extra damage reduction for negative effects on us and Sustained by Suffering. You can also play instead of Sustained by Suffering with Refreshing Stride, I also use it sometimes. It's also very good, especially when you fight Zergs and you have to run around the tower or so, then you get tons of magic recovery while you're sprinting. This is also very, very helpful. Okay, now we take a look onto the blue CPs and here I'm going with Focused Mending, Master at Arms for more direct damage. Wrathful Strikes for 200 extra spell damage with our damaging abilities. And the last one here, Force of Nature. With every status effect that we have on our target, we have 660 extra penetration. And this fix the lack of penetration that we have with this build because we have tons of status effect effects. You guys saw it, with the back bar we can already proc two status effects. But also on our front bar I'm going here with the Force Pulse or the Crushing Shock Morph. And yeah, there we have also Flame, Frost and Shock damage. And if you guys see now how much debuffs I can apply with this build, it's crazy. Um, for sure, the extra penetration comes just with status effects, but I show you now all the debuffs. So we are using our Blade Cloak, we have the debuff with the Supper Sword, we can cast the Destructive Touch, and you guys see it on top there, there are so many debuffs on the target. This is crazy guys, they can't clean all these debuffs and we can apply them the full time again and this is insane. We have basically all status effects in the game. Only Bleed is missing, yeah, because Bleed is rare to get. Um, this is the only one that is missing. We have the magic enchantment, uh, the magic status effect with the Supper Sword for example it can proc. Then we have all the elemental status effects with the Crushing Shock, we have Frost, Flame and Shock. We have the physical damage one with the blade clock and our light and heavy attacks with the um, on the back bar can also proc it. Then we have also the poison status effect and the disease status effect. So we basically, if we, you can also check it here. There are some people don't know this in tutorials. You can check here in combat. We have fire, shock, frost, disease, poison. Physical is possible, a bit harder to get for sure. 
because we can just proc it with the hits of the blade cloak um, or with light and heavy attacks on the back bar. The magic wand can proc with the supper sword for example. Yeah, we have everything. Only bleed is missing, but we have all the other status effects and this is insane guys. So for every status effect we get extra 660 weapon uh, yeah, weapon and spell penetration. And now yeah, guys, what should I say? This passive works great for this build and it fixed the lag of our penetration. Okay guys, these are the CPs that I'm using and now I show you the skills. Okay, now on the end we take a look onto the skills that I'm using and here we start on the front bar with Deep Fissure, the Frost Clench, Bird of Prey, Arctic Blast, the Crushing Shock Morph. You can also play with the other morph but it's more expensive and this one here is nice to interrupt for example people that are resting in PvP or you can interrupt snipers, this is also very helpful. The Ice Comet Ultimate you can also play here with the Downbreaker if you want, but the Ice Comet for sure we are using Frostbite, so it's extra 8% more damage and I think it fits perfectly into this build. You can stun them with your Ice here for example and then you hit them with the Ice Comet. This is also very good if the enemy is blocking normally your ultimate. Okay, on the back bar I'm going here with Permafrost. You can also use the other morph, but since this patch I'm going with Permafrost because the chill status effect that we have the full time here with every hit applies some extra proc damage and the chill effect also puts the debuff on all the targets around us. They deal all 5% less damage, so it's some extra damage reduction as well. Okay, the blue betty here, Living Trellis, this is a skill that you can swap sometimes. Yeah, you can also use other heal skills for example. This depends a bit if you play in a group, solo, choose here a skill that you like. We saw Ring Rigor, the Quick Cloak and the Ice Fortress. Okay guys, this is the build. These are the skills that I'm using. And if you still have questions, this is a very unique build I know and I really love it. And I really enjoy the play with the status effects and yeah, it's a bit cancer for sure. It's a cancer build. We can stun our targets a lot. We can freeze them. We can put all the status effects. It's very strong in crew PvP. And if you guys have still questions to this build, feel free to ask me in the comments below. We see us in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a nice day. Bye bye.